It's Patriots Week, and it's time to take them for a dog walk. Let's get into it. Football fans, Miami Dolphins fans, thank you for checking out the program. I appreciate each and every one of you that come here and listen to little old me talking about my favorite football team, the Miami Dolphins. Um, if you could, give a like, comment, tell me what you think of the video, and uh, let's get into this. I said in the beginning that this needs to be a dog walking, and I, I mean that, and it's not an insult to the Patriots. Um, it's, it's more of a we better type of threat to the Miami Dolphins and the fact that this is the last easy game for the Dolphins here um, before we get into some harder games with number one being the Green Bay Packers on Thursday so we play this game on Sunday against the Patriots then we have four days until Thursday night football when we play the Packers in Lambeau probably going to be sub sub freezing temperatures and maybe even snow so this game they need to win um, it needs to happen and, and I'm gonna get into some stats and the injury report and my prediction and everything else as we go here and more importantly my three keys to victory for the offense and my three keys to victory for the defense but before I do all that I just kinda wanna give a basic feel of what's going on here we're looking at the Miami Dolphins sitting at four and six and they have this game they're playing at home in Miami Dolphins weather, Miami Dolphins Stadium, everything is 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 how is set up for us to get a win here. Um, and I want to talk about a little more here. We've got the Dolphins haven't lost to the Patriots in a few years. Um, Tua Tungavailoa has not lost to the Patriots ever. Uh, it's it's one of those situations where this just needs to be a win for the Miami Dolphins. And the reason I said it needs to be a dog walking is more along the lines of this. If you go watch any YouTuber, any media, any content creator, any sports channel, um, you go look at Twitter or Facebook or any of these other things, you're going to see the same things constantly popping up against about the Miami Dolphins. And one of those things is that our season is over, we need to tank, and we need to get a better quarterback, and blah, 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 freaking blah. I'm, I'm so sick of it. I don't think that the attitude of let's lose every game and tank for a rookie quarterback, number one, it, it doesn't make sense in a lot of different ways. Number one, it doesn't make sense in the fact that you're giving up a quarterback that you know what you have. And let's be real, he's a top 10 quarterback. Uh, whether people want to admit it or not, they have a bunch of arguments against it. I'm not extremely pro Tua. I'm not. I didn't think that we should give him we should have given him that huge contract. I thought that we should have waited one more year. I didn't think that I didn't think that he was terrible. I didn't think that he's a bad quarterback. I don't think he's an elite quarterback yet. I think he is a very good quarterback. And he has certain elite qualities to his game that make him a desirable person to have run your offense, especially this kind of offense. I think that it doesn't make sense in that aspect to want to tank to to get a different quarterback that you don't know what you're going to get with a rookie quarterback. Yes, it'll be cheap and you could hit on that draft pick. But at what the at what cost? Giving up something that you know you have good qualities and a good quarterback in, giving that up for a complete chance. Oh, well, the top something quarterback is is a good Are you sure about that, Caleb Williams? Are you are you sure about that? Because I'm looking at some of these top quarterbacks, and I'm just not that impressed. I'll be real. And, yeah, some of them are doing good. But there are such things as busts. And I don't think it's worth that that, that thing, or worth, worth that risk. So, the tank, the tank idea is, oh, I got something in my eyeball. The tank idea is frustrating. It bugs me a lot. I think that number one, that's not that doesn't that doesn't represent fandom for a team in the first place. If you want your team to lose, I mean, 
ugh, I, I mean, I can kind of understand the logic behind it. You want to get better. But as a jaded fan, as somebody who has issues with a team or the results that we're constantly getting, the whole tank thing just doesn't work. So let's move on from that. Um, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a situation where we just we have to win this game. And I think that we need to win it by a lot. If nothing else, if for nothing else other than to just silence some of this, this constant criticism and these same things that everybody says about about Miami, and I feel like Miami has done a lot of things to answer and kind of quash or qualm a lot of those a lot of those complaints in in the things that we've done this year, um, learning to play the way we've been playing and playing well and and fighting through this adversity and. And improving every week and I, I just I see good things here and I want to continue and I don't want to start losing games to try to pick up some excellent draft pick that could or could not be a success that doesn't make sense to me so miss me with that whole thing and like I said I'll, I'll respect your opinion if you think that you want the team to do that but I don't I don't understand that logic I don't see that and it also, it's just not in the, it's not in the spirit of the game. And if you're sitting here telling me you're an NFL fan, and you're a football fan, in what spirit are you a fan of wanting to do bad, possibly ruin people's careers, lives, so that we can have a couple, a couple extra wins on the on the schedule, or do you want to see your team get better? I want to see the team get better. So that's what I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for our team to get better every week and and progress through this season and hopefully end up with a playoff push. So in order to do that, this game we need to win. And we need to win by a lot. I don't want it to even be close. I want it to be a dog walking. I want to go out there in the first possession of the game. I want to take up a bunch of time. And I want to score a touchdown. I want to stop them. And I want to get the ball back, and I want to go down the field again and score a touchdown into the first quarter. 14 nothing. That's what I want. And it's feasible to have that happen in this game. The Patriots are playing bad. Drake May, however, is not playing bad. Drake May is playing well. And if you watch this kid play, he reminds you of a certain other AFC East quarterback. And I'm not saying he's, he's the next coming of this person, but... He definitely has these qualities and that escapability and the ability to run and extend plays that makes you look at him and go, oh, that could be another Josh Allen. So, this is not an insult to the Patriots saying they're, they're, they're a bad team. I'm saying they're playing bad. They're playing bad right now, offense and defense. However, their quarterback is a big improvement over Jacoby Brissett, and that's who we played last time, and we won that game 15-10. to 10. Granted, we didn't have our quarterback either. We had Snoop, you know. So it wasn't like it was a big a big advantage for, for us playing against Jacoby Brissett. We were both, both teams were disadvantaged in that game. It's amazing that both teams made it on the field and scored some points. <laughs> so um, let's move on here and, and get going through this. Um, like I said, it's, it's, our, it's us against them. It's Patriots week. This is one of those things that always gets everybody going. It's a division rivalry. The New England Patriots are three and eight. The Miami Dolphins are four and six. This is the beginning of a turnaround for one team. You know, the Patriots could have a chance to go four and eight, and the Miami Dolphins have a chance to get one game from five hundred at five and six. Imagine getting this win for Miami and then going into Thursday night football against the Packers and having a chance to pull yourselves out of the hole and getting back to 6-6, six and six, getting back to 500, out of the losing record, and put that far behind you. Put that in the rearview mirror and move on. Looking forward to the rest of the season and a possible playoff appearance. If we get a little bit of help, if you go look back at the last video I did, about week 12 NFL predictions, you'll see that I, at the end of it, I listed the things that Miami Dolphins fans should want to have happen with the rest of the games this week to get a little bit of a help 
moving towards that playoff position. But all that depends on Miami winning these games. This game especially, because this is the next one on the list. I hope our team is focused. I hope our team is prepared to play this, this, this New England Patriots version. They are, they are not slouches. Any team can win a game at any time. So we need to take them seriously and play them hard. So that's what I'm hoping for. And you're going to see there's, there's some things that point to a possibility of, of success for Miami in this game. And there hasn't been much hope for success for our team in this, in this season. And as we move on into the season deeper and deeper, I find my hope returning as I see our team continually get better, play better, and, and just all around do a better job playing the sport. And it's starting to equate to the wins in the win column. Two weeks ago we were two and six. Now we're four and six with a chance to put together a good win streak. Three wins in a row. We could have that this week at home. I want to see it. So let's talk about some of these rankings for, for our for individual parts of this offense and defense for each team and go through this. Let's talk about it. No, let's start. Let's start with our Miami Dolphins. Miami. Now I'm going to go through some offensive rankings and keep in mind these have gotten better every week for the last four weeks. Um, Miami is averaging a whole lot more points with Tua back. They're playing better. They're having more yards. Everything is improving. Even our rushing is getting better. So let's look at it. Yards per game. Miami Dolphins are at 319 yards per game. We were down around 280 270 without Tua. Unreal. We are now 22nd in the league, and we were 27th or 28th in yards per game. We are 22nd in the league now at yards per game for offense. Points per game for offense, we are at 18.1 points per game. That number was at 12.5 points per game four weeks ago. We are now 26th. We were 32nd, last in the league for points. 26th now and moving up. It looks good. It's impressive seeing our points jump the way it did from averaging, you know, if you look at the, the individual averages, so if you look at the first the first uh, uh, four, four, five weeks of the season, it really just four because of the, the bye, the first four weeks of the season, we averaged 12.5 points per game. The last four weeks of the season, we're averaging 20... I think 29 or 30 points per game. Good job. That's impressive. That's well over double. And, and that's what you need to do. So it, keep looking to see our offense, offensive rankings improve. Um, rushing, we are 11th in the NFL at 122 yards per game. I'm happy with a top 10 rushing offense. I'm happy with that. And I know it could be better. Wait till Alec Ingold comes back. And I think... This week, we're going to see Alec Ingold back in the game. Alec Ingold plays like a god amongst boys when he plays against the New England Patriots. So, if we have Alec Ingold back, I would look for that rushing to skyrocket this week. Uh, passing, we're 24th in the NFL at 197 yards per game. And it's just getting better every week. Now... Defense, our defense. Well, actually, before we get into the defenses, let me talk about the Patriots offense since I'm on the offensive terror right now. So, Patriots offense. Yards per game, they are 31st in the NFL at 281.2 yards per game. Points per game, they are 30th in the NFL at 16.5 points per game. Rushing, they are 21st with 115.3 yards per game rushing. Passing, they are last in the league, dead last, at 165.9 yards per game. Oh, but Dirk, I thought you said that the Patriots' offense, passing-wise, was, was decent because of their new quarterback. I thought you said he was so much better than Jacoby Brissett. I did. I did. And he is. Drake May is much better than Jacoby Brissett. They are still 32nd in the league in passing. Why is, why is Drake May so much better then? Well... Drake May has some red zone efficiency, and so that's one thing. The other thing about that is Drake May is escapable. He has running ability. So he's a dual threat. You have to watch out for him. 
which makes a whole bunch of parts of the defense be be oh my wife is waving at me through the window and she's pretty sure she just flipped me off what in the world <laughs> now she's laughing she knows I'm making a video folks she doesn't hate me I promise um but that's why is yes they are 32nd in the league in passing but they are a good they are they have a good quarterback and we need to account for him at all times because he will burn us if we don't but I'll get into that so for the Patriots defense they are 20th in the NFL for yards per game, allowing 345.2 yards per game, points per game. They're 18th in the NFL, allowing 22.5. Rushing, they allow 128.4 yards per game, and they're ranked 20th. In passing, they're ranked 20th as well, at 216.8 yards per game. They are the 20th ranked defense in the NFL. So there's room for us to play there. Um, their defense is not overwhelming or incredibly good in any any facet of the game. And they have the ability to play there, to play better. But I think right now with the scheme and, and with the, the group of players that they have there, I don't think they have the ability to really hinder the Miami Dolphins offense, especially the way we've been playing. <laughs> because you know what they're going to do. They're going to go out there, and they're going to lay down a cover two shell and play high high protection, which means they're going to give us the middle of the field. They're going to do exactly what the Raiders did. Mark my words. It's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to do what the Raiders did. They're going to give us the middle of the field. We have to take advantage of that. We'll have Alec Ingold back. We need to use him to open up just gargantuan gaps in that defense. And he will, especially with the way our O-line has been playing. I'll get into the three keys, and I'll explain a little more of that later. So with the Miami defense, we are ninth in the NFL at averaging 308 yards per game. We're also 14th in the NFL in scoring, allowing 22.1 yards per game. Now... If you look at this, the defense for the yards per game for the Patriots, they are 18th at 22.5 yards per game. We are allowing 22.1 points per game, and we're 14th. That's pretty close. However, our rushing defense is 9th, allowing 109 points per game. And our passing defense is 10th, allowing 199 yards per game. Just 199 yards per game. So we are a number 10, we are the number 10 defense in the NFL playing against a bad offense. I am very happy with the way our team has been playing defense. I'm happy with Anthony Weaver and the way that he moves players around and shuffles them and finds places where they can excel and gives them the matchups they need to play well. I'm happy with Storm Duck and our other younger players that are growing and learning to play this game. I'm happy with Chop Robinson. I'm happy as heck with Chop Robinson. He might not have a ton of sacks, but that man is getting more pressure on the quarterback and winning his, his, his pass block rates more than anybody I've ever seen, especially this year. He's doing amazing. You might not see it all the time yet, but spend a possession or two and just watch him specifically when he's in the game. Watch how he plays. Watch how fast he is off the ball. It's going to translate into sacks. It's going to happen. When he improves his 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 skill sets a little more and opens up a little more variety of things that he can do at the line, the man is going to be unstoppable. I can't wait for it. I'm excited. Um so looking at those those rankings the Dolphins should win this game. Now, are they going to blow out the Patriots? I hope so, but I can't say for sure. I don't really think, I don't really think the Patriots are going to want to get blown out. Do you? <laughs> Looking at the stats and the rankings of our offense and defense, and theirs, it tells me a story, and it tells me the story that the Patriots are not going to be able to stop our offense, and because of that, we should be able to pretty much score at will. Now we've been doing that for the last two or three weeks, including the Buffalo game. Just came up short at the end there, but and Tua had that that fumble. 
Um, but the point is, is, is that though those games, we've been scoring pretty much at will. There's been only a couple of possessions that have been not scores. Everything else has led to points. And if you do that as an offense, you're going to win games. Especially if you have a number 10 ranked defense playing alongside that. And one thing we've always seemed to have is this issue with teams, with our Dolphins team, playing defense and offense together. Playing good offense, good defense. We've seen that the last few weeks. We need to keep seeing it. And this is where it needs to happen. This game. The New England Patriots playing the Miami Dolphins in Miami Gardens. And I think it'll happen. So, with that, let's move into a couple other things here. Let's look at the injury reports because that's you know that's another thing that's important to look at here. Um, we'll start with the Patriots. It's <laughs> here. It is. Let me get my head down here so I can look. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> um, there's a whole lot of questionables here for the Patriots. Now, Joaquin Roy is is out. He's the only player that's definitely out. However, you're going to see a few of these players be out on Sunday. I can't really say for sure who that's going to be, but I can tell you Sion Takitaki, the linebacker, he is going to be playing for sure. Um, he had a full week of full practice. So look at him and, say, and you know he's going to be playing. However, Christian Gonzalez, he's got a bad hip injury. He was limited on Friday and he was not. he did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. He might play. He might play in a limited fashion. He very well could be out. I cannot say. Patriots fans, if you know anything about that, feel free to comment and let me know. I'd appreciate that. Um, there's a lot of limited here and questionable for this game status. Now, the ones that stand out to me mainly is is Christian Gonzalez, obviously. Kyle Duggar is is a good safety, and he he's got an ankle injury and he's limited all week. They got him listed as questionable. If they have some of these backfield players out, Keon White, that's another one that look, I'm looking at, and I'm like, dang, man. Um, it, just, it just seems like they, they could really be hurting on defense, and especially those, those, those top two being questionable and out. You know, Christian Barrymore and, and uh, Joaquin Roy, I, I'm, it's sad that players are hurt like that and they're questionable, but at the same time as a Dolphins fan, you got to be kind of, encouraged by this, seeing so many of their, their defensive talent possibly out. Um, we'll see what happens on Sunday, but as of right now, that's what the injury report looks like for the Patriots, and it's not great. It could be way worse, though. So, not great, but not good. Or not bad. So, that's where they're at, and let's move on to Miami. Now, this one, this one's going to be a shocker. Look at that. So, Kendall Fuller, obviously still got the concussion, and he's out. Didn't practice all week. Now, the other ones, Teron Armstead, he's going to play. Uh, this is something he does every week. He's around. He does he does workouts and stuff, but his knee is bugging him. He's gonna, He was a DNP all, all week, but he'll play. He always does. Um, Alec Ingold, the calf injury, he's been limited, but he's been practicing, and he's questionable. Now, limited, keep in mind, what does limited mean? Limited means they just didn't practice the full amount of snaps that they normally do. They could have done 98% of their normal normal snaps and normal touches in practice, and they would be listed as questionable or uh, limited. So don't freak out too much there. Alec Ingold will be playing. Now, here's the one that I'm excited about. Patrick McMorris. Full, full, full. All three days, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Full participant in practice. Didn't miss a snap. They got him listed as questionable. Now, the reason he's listed as questionable is not because he's questionable. If he was able to play, he'll be playing. The problem is, is we have to do some uh, roster moves to make room for him to be on the team or to be suiting up. So look for that to happen because I really, really, really hope that he plays. He's able. He's ready. Patrick McMorris, you remember him from the preseason. He was incredible, and then he got hurt. We need him back, especially now. It would be amazing to have him back out there. Isaiah Wynn, I'm not sure here. Um, Mike McDaniel said he was optimistic about him playing. He's been out for a very long time, but he has limited practice every every day this week. They got him listed as questionable. It's kind of the same situation as Patrick Morris. 
So they're kind of working out what to do with the roster to get those two players in. And until they do, this is what it's going to look like. But do not be surprised if they end up playing on Sunday. That's all we have for an injury report. I don't even have to go like this. You can see me just sitting up normal. Crazy. So that's the injury report for Miami. That's encouraging. We're healthy. We're becoming a healthy team near the end of the season. Man. And also, Bradley Chubb could be coming back soon. I would look for Bradley Chubb to make a showing either this coming week against the Green Bay Packers or the following week against the Jets. That's kind of what I was I circled at the beginning of the year, thinking that's when he should be back. We'll see. But that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Early December, late November is what I was thinking for him coming back. And it looks like he's been pretty on schedule. Mike McDaniel says there's been no issues and no setbacks. So hopefully that's the deal. We'll see. So we talked about the injury reports. We've talked about the records. We've talked about what needs to happen. We've talked about some of the stats on the offense and defense for each team. Let's get into these offense and defensive keys to victory for the Miami Dolphins. Our offensive keys to victory for the Miami Dolphins. I have three of them this week. One of them, like I said, is always going to be up there because it's so important, especially for us Miami Dolphin fans and for our team. The first one, our three keys to off to offensive victory. Number one, run, run, run. We need to run the ball. I know that the last week or so we've had a little bit of a slowed down rushing attack, and it's not because two has been passing. It's because Alec Ingold has been out. Now, I think Alec Ingold is going to be back in this game. If not all the time, he's going to be a limited participant in the game, and that's going to benefit us immensely. We're going to see... The run game come back. Devon A. Chan loves him some Alec Ingold. <laughs> the holes that get opened up from Alec Ingold are just incredible. The man is a human spear. He just runs people over. Watch him play. It's incredible. That's what needs to happen. I want to see 150 yards rushing against the Patriots on Sunday. If we get 150 yards, we're going to win the game. It's that simple. And furthermore... These, this is the team that you can run on the outside zone. You can run that, that zone option, where that zone stretch where you stretch on a along the line and move yourself outside. Now that is that is is, is a chance game, and it, it it's it's gonna be it's gonna be it'll be good if we do that in this game. We we still need to run heavy in between the tackles, but this is one of those games where we can stretch and run outside of the tackles as well. And it needs to happen because it'll keep that defense on their heels. So, first one, run, run, run. Number two, Tua just needs to do what he's been doing. And what is that? Oh, well, look at that number two right there. Tua needs to be surgical. He has been surgical. No one can say that. The man is averaging almost an 80% completion percentage. Almost 80%. He's been playing great, and it needs to continue. They're going to give us nothing but the middle of the field and short passes. Tua needs to take it. Let everybody talk about how Tua is only throwing short. I don't care. Tua needs to take the short passes. If he tries to force balls down the field, that's when bad things happen. Take your shots when they are there. Like if they drop into a single cup, single safety formation or if they drop into a cover one, oh my goodness, let them have it. Bomb it to Jalen Waddle. Bomb it to Tyreek Hill. Send, send send someone deep and, and throw it to them. Take a shot. But if they have two high safeties, don't even worry about that. Take the middle of the field. Their middle linebacker core and their, their middle coverage on the on offense or on defense for the Patriots is weak. Just like the Raiders were. And last week I said take the middle of the field. And they did. And look what happened in that game. There were miscommunications. There was missed tackles. There was there was everything that could have been great. Everything that we needed to happen in the, in the middle of the field was happening. And Tua was taking advantage of it. And we had a great game through the air because of it. That needs to happen again. Because the Patriots, I have a feeling, are going to play a very similar design on defense to what the Raiders were doing. I don't know why. 
I mean, at this point as a defense, I would almost want to try a single coverage, safe, single safety coverage scheme and just see how it works for a quarter. See if you can catch the Dolphins sleeping and run single, single safety instead of a two high shell. But I think that they're going to be doing two high shell. And I think because of that, if Tua is surgical and throws those balls where they need to go and does what he did last week and the week before and the week before and the week before, this game's going to be over quick. Now, the last one. The O-line needs to play good. No, the O-line doesn't need to play good. They need to dominate this game. They need to dominate the Patriots' defensive line. They need to come out, set the pace, punch the Patriots in the mouth. I don't even care if the first possession is a three and out. I want to see, I just want to see our offensive linemen go out there, throw people on the ground, take a penalty. I don't care. Sit on them. Squash their heads. I don't care. Slap them in the face, right across the ear hole. I don't care. That's what I want to see. I want to see our offensive line come out there, throw them around in the first possession, and be like, this is how this game's going to be the rest of it. Brace yourselves. I want them to come out there, just look across the, on the, at, at the defensive line, and say, you guys are going to be in for a fight today. That's what I want. <laughs> That's it. I don't even care if it results in, in a three and out for the first possession. I want I want pain. I want the O-line to be brutal. So that's my three keys to the offense for victory. Run, run, run. Tua needs to be surgical. And the O-line needs to absolutely dominate every aspect of their game. So that's that. Let's move on to some defensive keys. Three keys for the defense to win this game. Number one, they need to fluster Jake May, or Drake May. Drake May, Jake May. <sighs> Drake May needs to never be comfortable. I don't want him to ever stand back and tap the ball in the middle of the pocket. I don't want that to happen. I want him running for his life. Well, how do you do that? How do you, how do you make a mobile quarterback run for his life? I'm glad you asked. Here's how. Look at number two. We need to do what Anthony Weaver has been doing these last few weeks, and that is shuffle our playmakers around so much that they can't get a grip on what we're doing. Continue to move our playmakers around. Switch Calais Campbell and Zach Sealer around like they did last week a bunch of times. Make them not know where people are. Make Dreg May come to the line of scrimmage and have to look around for 10 to 15 seconds and find out where everybody's at. Okay, there's Calais. There's Zach. Oh, uh, there's Benito right there. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, there's Jalen Ramsey. You know, there's Cater Co. I want him to have to figure out where people are. Every play. Keep him guessing. And, and when you do that, you allow opportunities to blitz. Because if you have players jumping around all over the place on defense, you have players interchanging like our Dolphins defense can, when you do that, you never know where the pressure is coming from. Show blitz and back off on the snap. Show blitz and, and send everyone. I don't care. Blitz. There needs to be blitz packages in this game, and it needs to directly reflect the shuffling playmakers. You do those things, Drake May will be completely uncomfortable, flustered, and unable to get the rhythm. That's what I want to see. Do those things, Drake's going to throw some picks. He's going to run. He's going to fumble. He's going to be, he's going to be upset. That's what we want. We want the rookie quarterback confused. Do those things. Number three, outstanding linebacker play. Drake May, he's a decent quarterback. He's learning. But if we can keep him frustrated, he's going to take the check down a lot. And that's going to fall on our middle linebackers and the play that they do, or middle and even our outside linebackers. They need to be outstanding in this game. If we have good play from our linebacker core, Drake May is going to have a long day. <laughs> That's what I want to see. I want to see that. I want to see our linebackers just dominate this game. Somebody comes up to try to chip you, put them on their butts. If you're sitting there hovering, waiting for something, if you're shadowing Drake May, if you're one of those guys that are doing that, and that on that particular play, if, the line, if their tight end comes up to you and tries to chip you on his way on a route, put him on his butt if you're within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Don't let anybody out-hustle you. Don't let anybody 
about physical you. There was a time when our linebackers were outstanding. Game in, game out. We haven't really had that kind of outstanding linebacker play in a couple years. In a few years. A bunch of years. We have a good linebacker core. And we need to show it this game. This is the game where our linebackers could win the day against this, this, this Patriots offense. So that's the keys. Make Drake May flustered by shuffling playmakers and sending the blitz in strange new directions all the time. Make him not ever know where he's going to get pressure from. Make him not know who's going to be the hot read off of a blitz. Make him confused. Make him feel like he has to go somewhere to get safe on the field. Make him feel like after two seconds in the pocket, he's got to go. That's what he needs. He needs to be rushed, confused, and hurried. And our outstanding linebacker play, it needs to happen. Those three things will win us this game on defense. So, that is all I've got, really, for this, this Patriots week. This is the second Patriots week of this season. I don't see any reason why we can't sweep this team this year, this Patriots team. I think the Patriots are having, taking the right steps, especially by, by Drake May. He is a good football player, and he's going to be better and better. So we need to take advantage of this now. And we need to win this game. And I think we will. I think we will. I have faith in it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lay down my prediction. I think that Miami wins this game 34-14. to And I don't think it's going to be a close game. I think we're going to win by three scores. And I think then we move on at 5-6 and six to face the Green Bay Packers. That's my prediction, and I'm sticking to it. Dolphins fans, thank you for coming and watching this video. I appreciate those of you that especially made it to the end here. And... Uh, Let's enjoy this game. Let's be faithful. Let's be positive. And uh, let's stay cool. All right, fins up. Have a great evening, everybody. Mm -hmm.